Hey, Steeler fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to our Pittsburgh Steelers News and Rumor video here on a Thursday. I know Tom had a News and Rumor video for you guys yesterday, but there's more stuff to break down, hence why I'm here to give you the latest on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's start with Deontay Johnson. What's the first word you think about when you think about Deontay Johnson? Do you think he's a number one? Is he a number two? Did he have his best year last year? Like, I'm just curious where you guys are at in terms of Deontay Johnson because Deontay Johnson thinks very highly of Deontay Johnson. According to this new report, he wants a $90 million new deal as the end of his contract comes up here very, very soon, which would make him the highest paid wide receiver with the most, or the, I say the largest contract for any Steeler receiver in Steeler history, with the next closest one being Antonio Brown a couple of years ago getting $68 million over a four-year period. So you do the math, five year, 90 million, a little calculation here and 18 million dollars a year is what Deontay Johnson wants and uh, maybe that's what Deontay Johnson is going to go ahead and get. Let's start with a quote here from SI.com. Throw it up on your screen. According to 93.7 The Fan host Andrew Philip Filipino? Philip Filipani, I think. Sorry, I butchered the name. How do you say it? Johnson is asking for a five-year, $90 million deal with his new, with his next contract. Comes after Tyree Kill, Devontae Adams landed record-breaking contracts, and Stephon Diggs inks a $104 million extension with the Buffalo Bills. He's going to say Johnson expected to be one of the next wide receivers to sign a big deal. He'll likely join DK Metcalf and AJ Brown in the second half of the offseason. So you see that and you go, oh, wow, that's a lot for uh, Deontay Johnson. But I didn't think the numbers weren't that bad in 2021. Actually, they were pretty darn good. I mentioned he had the best year of his entire career, 107 catches, 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns, 10.9 yards per catch. And you go, wow, okay, maybe he is worth $18 million a year. Pair that on top of everyone who's been signed this offseason, and you'll see that the entire wide receiver free agent market, and really the entire wide receiver market as a whole, has been reset. Like, look at this. You want to look at the receivers that are making $18 million a year right now in the NFL? First, Michael Thomas, 19.25, didn't play last year. Then you have Christian Kirk, who, you know, fine, but a wide receiver three at best with the Cardinals. Kenny Galladay, trash this past year, $18 million a year with the Giants. Tyler Lockett, definitely worth 17. Mike Evans, definitely worth 16. You're asking to be paid higher than Mike Evans and Tyler Lockett. That is a lot to ask. But again, with Christian Kirk resetting the market, getting $18 million a year from the Jaguars, maybe just maybe that's what Deontay Johnson is going to go ahead and get. Now, if I'm Dante, Deontay Johnson, I'm going to be a little careful here. Obviously, bid high, but it is a very wide receiver heavy NFL draft. And the Steelers might just go, Deontay, listen, we don't want to give you that much money. We're just going to let you walk in for agency whenever you become available and just draft somebody in the second, third, or fourth round. So careful, Deontay. But just know as a Steeler fan that he is asking for a lot of money and that contract could happen uh, in the second half of the offseason, which really is coming up pretty darn soon because the draft officially kind of ends the, uh, not ends the offseason, but kind of ends the offseason because then you go into like OTAs and stuff and that's still the offseason, but not like a signing period in the offseason. So you get my point. Either way, go down below, answer the pinned comment, quick ad break here. How much would you be willing to pay Johnson a year? All right, $18 million? $12 million? $13 million? twenty. Where are you at on Deontay Johnson? Let's gauge the fans. Go down below and comment. Uh, let's move over here to uh, a little quick short look at the list of remaining free agent wide receivers. You mentioned Deontay Johnson. There are still some free agent wide receivers, and there was a couple of websites that had some links to their picks on guys, and it's very similar to what I have on the screen right now. We'll jump through these very, very quickly and then show you the wide receiver depth chart. Will Fuller remains available, and he's a very interesting prospect. You look at Will Fuller and you go, okay, he's been very successful at times. He has great speed, great route running, did fantastic with Deshaun Watson. Is it because he didn't have Deshaun Watson? Is it due to injuries that he still remains for sign? Does he want too much money? Money. All might be true, but Will Fuller remains one of the better for agent wide receivers available for a Steeler team that does need some help. T.Y. Hilton remains available. The savvy veteran, of course, has had a lot of time with the Colts. He's getting up there in age and had a lot of back issues with the Colts this past season. When he's healthy, he's really, really good, but is he someone you want the Steelers to go out and sign on a one-year deal? Eh, I could probably pass. Marquis Goodwin, the former speedster, I guess still is a speedster, is available on the market. He would be a very cheap addition to the Steeler wide receiver depth chart. If you needed somebody, didn't want to you know, trade for somebody. He definitely is an option that would be, again, extremely cheap, would just be there to give you some deep vertical threats. And, you know, he can do that whenever he stays healthy and is on the football field. And finally, a lot of Stuart fans have commented on my Twitter account, or at least DM me asking for AJ Green, the, talk about old veteran. I mean, he legit is, you know, 32, 33 years old, but he remains a free agent and probably looking for one final two or three year deal to go ahead and round out his career, maybe providing some, you know, words of wisdom, some some, some master Uguay on the Steeler wide receiver depth chart 
chart for a young Chase Claypool and a young Deontay Johnson. We keep talking about the Steelers wide receiver core, not because it's terrible. It just feels like they need another one. I mean, doesn't it? I mean, maybe, maybe Claypool takes that next step, matures a lot, stays healthy, and then he's your wide receiver one for the, for, for, for the long term. You don't need somebody else. That that could happen. Or maybe him plus Deontay Johnson is a good pairing. Pat Fryer moved to the tight end spot. Like, they're not horrific in terms of weapons. I just feel like most Steelers fans are saying you got to add another one, and hence why I think that uh, they're looking around and possibly could be looking to add another wide receiver, whether it's in the draft or free agency or via a trade. Now, is there a free agent the Steelers should sign? Is there somebody out there? Probably Tyron Matthew. I know you guys all want Ty Tyron Matthew, despite he visited with the Saints a couple of days ago. Name a free agent the Steelers to sign down below in the comments section. And of course, if they sign somebody, we'll cover it here. I mean, that's what we do. They're all the hosts here at Chat Sports are ready to go at a certain time of the day to give you the latest Steelers news and rumors whenever they drop. In the mornings with the guys in Dallas, you know, in the afternoon, in the evening, like we are ready to rock for you. So if you appreciate that, you like the Steelers, go down below and subscribe. Let's round it out here with a brand new mock draft coming out via CBS Sports, and it shows the Steelers trading up to get a quarterback, which to me seems to be gaining steam right now in the first round. So I just want to run through the first 15 picks, show you where, where we're at, and show you where this, how the Steelers went ahead and moved up. So the CBS Sports mock draft, Jaguars take Evan Neal, Lions take Aiden Hutchinson, Texans take Iguanu the tackle, Trayvon Walker goes to the Jets, and Ahmad Gardner goes to the Giants. That's it's pretty typical. No drama there. I think it's very similar to how the first round is going to go ahead and go with Neal and Hutchinson going one and two. Next five, get a little bit of drama here. Kenny Pickett to the Panthers. That's gaining a lot of steam as Matt Rule tries to salvage his NFL coaching, I, I, I'd say, career by getting a quarterback that doesn't stink like all the ones he's had in the past. Giants take Kayvon Thibodeau, the pass rusher from Oregon. Falcons go receiver, the first one off the board at number eight in Garrett Wilson. Seahawks take Derek Stingley, and the Jets take Kyle Hamilton. Again, not a ton of drama there. That's kind of a consensus mock draft from a lot of the experts uh, in the community. Then you get to the early teens, and this is where Pittsburgh comes into the picture. So Washington takes Drake London. And then there's Pittsburgh, up from 20 to number 12 with the Minnesota Vikings trade and, of course, taking Malik Willis. Now, Malik Willis has been talked about a lot with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's obviously understandable. But at the same time, the point of showing this mock draft is to show that if you want him, you have to go up. And this might not even be enough. There are other mock drafts having him go 8 to the Falcons or even earlier to teams uh, who are in love with him, like maybe Detroit if they want to have a backup who eventually becomes the starter over Jared Goff. So when you look at mock drafts, just know, if they don't have the Steelers going up inside the top 10, I don't know if they're going to get Malik Willis. And the only way the Steelers do trade up is at the last second, if Willis is there at 10, 11, 12, and they feel like they got to go move up now, then they'll go ahead and bump up to get uh, the quarterback out of Liberty. Now, again, like I said, clearly you got to go ahead and trade up. So just know that this, this is going to happen. It's going to happen early on in the NFL draft. Once you get to pick 10, if Willis is still there, as you watch night one, April 28th, just start thinking in, in, in your head, all right, any minute now, if they want a quarterback, if they really don't believe in Mitch Trubisky, if they really like Malik Willis or Matt Corral or Desmond Ritter, it's going to come anytime soon, and this mock draft is a good example of that actually happening. Um, if they do take Malik Willis, what grade would you give that pick? A, B, C, D, or F? Hmm? Like overall, what grade would you give that pick? A, B, C, D, or F? Let me know down below right now. All right, ultimate today on our Pittsburgh Steelers news and review video. Give me a follow on Twitter at Real Thomas Mott. And of course, if you guys want to be a part of next week's mailbag video, our mailbag video later on this weekend, go ahead and use the hashtag Steelers in the comments section. One of us will pull the questions from our subscribers and pick the best five or six to answer in a video, which you guys have seen a lot of over our channel the past couple of weeks. Again, for Thomas Mott, Pittsburgh Steelers signing off for the rest of your day.